All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another Ajax cast. Today we got a special one for you. Uh, all of us here at Ajax, we're big sports fans, especially when it comes to football, and in this case, NFL football. And I'm sure if any of you guys are into sports or NFL football, you saw what happened with Tua talking by Loa last night in the Dolphins Bengals game. Um, he was already suffering from a concussion injury, what, this past Sunday, and he decided to play Thursday. Uh, we'll go more in depth on that, but I'm here with the beam, and we got a special one for you today. We got the Kelvin with us today. So um, to kick things off, um, I want to hear y'all's initial thoughts about it. Yeah, um, the video is scary. I'll insert it right here. But... Um, I don't know, man. Like seeing like his hands and shit. That's what freaked me out the most. Like, uh, that was my biggest thing. Just the reaction that came from it. But what are y'all's initial thoughts when it comes to this? I mean, honestly, it's always scary to see what's the fencing response out of someone because that signifies usually a brainstem injury. And considering he's coming off a concussion from last week. It was really scary because of, you know, secondary impact syndrome mm -hmm. where people can actually die from having two concussions in that short of a time span. Or get fully paralyzed. So, yeah. Or, yeah, lose motor function. Thankfully, that didn't happen. But this was really just way too risky of a maneuver, I felt. Like, honestly, just rest him for at least a week, especially on a short week like this. I mean, everyone was kind of expecting this at this point. So, yeah, I hated the decision. I think you should have sat yeah, yeah I, I, I agree with you, Tyler. I think, like like you say, it was a short week. I mean, you already had – I mean, you're 3-0 and off to a hot start. You know, it's – I mean, I mean, we saw the play with the Bills. Like, he was stumbling and things like that, and then you want to play on five days later. I just don't think it really made sense to throw him out there, and it's not like you're throwing, a, like, a scrub out there as your backup. You're throwing Teddy Bridgewater, who's won games and can win games for you and make plays. So – and I just think if they maybe would have trotted him out there the whole game, maybe they would have had a chance to win. But, yeah, I just don't think it was a smart decision for the Tua to play yesterday. Yeah, and then um, the one thing I do want to say that's not related to Tua and the injury, the Bengals wearing the white on white, finally oh, yeah. breaking out the white helmets, was some of the cleanest shit I've seen in a while. I was so <laughs> happy they did oh, that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I, was so, I mean, and the Dolphins look good, too. That what was I guess that's teal or aquamarine. Mm -hmm. from hit from uh shoulders down and then the white helmets oh, i love that but yeah, yeah uh, i agree with y'all as well um the next thing i kind of want to move into is who really this decision came down to if tua had any say in it or if it was mainly just the coaching staff and the higher ups that are telling them hey you gotta play um or maybe hey tua could have been feeling great could have passed all his protocols because we haven't seen much on it yet or i haven't at least um is there anything that you, you guys have seen that's indicated any of that I mean, from what I've seen is obviously the team's going to say he passed concussion protocol last week because if they don't, then they're going to get in some trouble with the NFL and mm -hmm. possibly legal trouble. And so I think the question isn't really did Tua feel okay enough to play because you don't get in the NFL unless you want to play anyway. These guys are always going to say yes if they can do anything on the field. And I feel like Tua is not going to say no even if he's suffering from a concussion. So it really falls on the coaching staff and the higher ups to take that risk into uh, account because otherwise these players are going to start hurting themselves out there. And honestly, we just got really lucky last night that nothing horrible happened because yeah. of that. So I think some of this falls on the uh, coaching staff. Yeah, honestly. More, more of them not telling him to play, more of them allowing him to play is what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. Because gotcha. these players are always going to play if they can, mm -hmm. if they think they can. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Tyler. Like, and it could go a little bit deeper than that because, I mean, we saw all the offseason concerns or, like, talk behind Tua. Like, is he, the, is he the QB for the Dolphins and things like that? So he may go out there and be like, I have something to prove that I am the QB for this team. So, like, no matter what happens to me, I'm going to go out there and try to make plays or at least play the game. So that could have played a huge factor, too. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think, like, the, the trainers and I, I, I saw something uh, that said that he got cleared by a team physician and like an outside source also. But I feel like at the end of the day, you're the dolphins and things like that. Like I said earlier, you're going off like five days rest. There's really 
just no need to play him. I, it's just wasn't a smart shit. Yeah. yeah, and I also want to bring up, too, like, <laughs> let's really think about the kinds of doctors they're going to bring in. I mean, who's hiring the doctors anyway? It's usually going to be the NFL. And the NFL yeah, cool. are probably more likely to hire doctors that would clear to in that situation than not. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're only going to hire doctors that are going to be friendly to uh, player injuries more. You know what I mean? Like, get them out there playing yeah. so they keep their product on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, 100%. Um, yeah, it was a disappointment, honestly. I definitely agree with Kelvin when it comes to he's out there trying to prove something because, dude, the past three years, all he's heard is that he is shitty, that um, Alabama carried him and all this crap, which I never believed. I've always been a big to a believer. As much as I dislike Alabama for <laughs> obvious reasons, we're all Georgia fans. Mm-hmm. Tua can spin the fucking ball, okay, man. He can zip that thing. I love how athletic he is. Like he plays with a really good grit. I remember um, watching him. It was before they beat Georgia in the uh, national championship. There was a game he came in, like, because they were beating the dog shit out of somebody. It was probably Southern Mississippi State Technical College or whatever the hell. They're up <laughs> seventy to nothing, and Tua came in and they let him sling it. Cause like I I started to watch it because I saw he was lefty, um because I mm. I've always been fascinated with lefty quarterbacks, um left handed pitchers, all that kind of shit, and I was like oh my god this dude can zip it for a lefty, and then especially in college he had an advantage because these corners aren't used to a left handed quarterback, so it was Sorry. harder for them to read him, and then I even think it's challenging people in the NFL because now Tua, well, before the other night, he was fully healthy because, you know, he still came in with lingering issues. He'd get a little banged up here and there because they had no offensive line his rookie year. And, you know, I think he was finally like, okay, let's fucking do this. Let's go out there. We got a team we can win with, you know. We got studs all across the board. So I think he's really wanting to prove something for his team and kind of lead from the front, you know. And that's kind of what made his decision or helped make up his decision to go out in the game. Is This is what I'm speculating off of, but... Oh, um, no, I completely agree. Okay. Um, yeah, honestly, like, I remember in the last offseason, too, they were talking about trading for Deshaun Watson to yeah. replace him. Like, it seemed like even the Dolphins organization didn't have a ton of confidence in him, especially, I know, Brian Flores, rumor has it, didn't really love him either. Yeah, I really. So, uh, it completely makes sense that he would be coming out here with something to prove this season. And respect to him because honestly, I wasn't all aboard the Tua train. But from what I've seen this year, that guy's got some skills. Yeah. And I'll be rooting for him when he comes back. Yeah. And I really got to hand it to the Miami Dolphins for not uh, getting Deshaun Watson. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving forward, um, we haven't seen much from. The NFL Players Association, or at least it hasn't been nationally televised, hasn't been big in the news in a while. Um, And I think for them to make themselves not seem like it's a joke, I think they at least need to investigate it or say that they're putting, put out some sort of statement. So there's actually some belief and some backing behind the NFLPA. Um, Do you think that there's anything that these guys would try to look into or potentially try to succeed? Yeah, I mean, honestly... That's pretty much the only defense to a has at this moment because without the NFL PA, this is just going to get swept under the rug. Like the NFL is just going to write it off as, oh, you know, you passed concussion protocol, but we can't catch all of them. And oh, it was just a bad hit in the second game. Mm-hmm. But I think it falls on the NFL PA right now to advocate for the player, even if Tua doesn't want them to. Because so I think yeah. what's going to end up happening is if the NFL PA launches an investigation, Tua is going to start feeling some pressure from the Miami Dolphins organization to come out and speak against it. You know, and it's kind of a difficult position for Tua because you know if he says a word against the coaching staff or the ownership or anything like that, he's barred from the league. Like mm-hmm. that's, li- that's his livelihood right there. Yep. So it's a tough position for him. And I think the best he can do at this point is just try to stay neutral. But yeah, I don't know where he's from. And honestly, I just hope the NFL PA can at least launch an investigation and figure out what happened and maybe try to get to a, some, uh, I don't know, legal help if necessary. But yeah, the NFL PA has to at least launch an investigation. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. Um, 
like if he stays neutral, like if he just, I guess, just say kind of like play dumb, just like, yeah, I just listen to the doctors and I passed the test. And yeah, I went on, they said I was good to go. And I went on by my business. I started to play. If he just like says that, I think that'll keep him in a safe ground. But you're right. The, the minute if he says something bad, you know, about the NFL PA, that could potentially like blackball him from the league. Just say the Dolphins do move on him from like after this season, then like, you, you you may have other teams saying like, oh, yeah, but, you know, he's against us. He's not really for us, for the players and things like that. And, you know, it could potentially – he could potentially be out the league, you know. so Yeah, and you know what, Tua, if this gets out to you, fuck your agent, send me a million dollars, I'll write you a script for your press. I got <laughs> you covered, man. But um, uh, another thing I was going to say was, you know, that's a quick turnaround for – football games it's like you know basketball baseball like there's quick turnarounds everything's fine you know because it's not as physically grueling as a sport as football is do you think there's a chance that we won't see thursday night football anymore i mean i don't know this is really an indictment of thursday night football so much as it's really an indictment on the nfl's concussion protocol Mm -hmm. right because i feel like when you're stumbling off the field like he was last week, you shouldn't be playing the next week's game, no matter if it's on a Thursday or a Sunday or a Monday. Yeah. Right. Like, I feel like if you, I really do think he had a concussion coming off it. And it's still absurd to me that they refused to declare it that and said it was back issues. Yeah. Uh, like he had I, a concussion. I saw one thing when they said it was ankle. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's my point. Like if it's a concussion, they, ha- but the thing is like, even if it was a concussion, they don't rule you out for that long compared to like say hockey where you're out for like four weeks. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause in the NFL, it really doesn't matter to them. Right. I mean, these, the same organization that try to prevent, uh, pretend CTE wasn't a thing. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot of uh, confidence in how they're handling concussions, but I don't think getting rid of Thursday games is going to solve it. Which by the way, um, at the NFL, if y'all pay us, We'll say CT is not a thing. We got you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think they'll get rid of Thursday night football. That just from the league's perspective, because mm-hmm. the new deal with Amazon, there's so much money tied up into that. But oh, yeah. I could see potentially like during like the next uh, like lockout agreements and things like that. Uh, I could see players maybe petitioning for like. The, me personally, I think the best idea, like if you do want to have Thursday night football, bring it in like halfway through the season, kind of like how college football brings in yep. like max in on like Tuesday or Wednesday nights or some belt football on Thursday nights. Mm-hmm. Bring it in like halfway through the season and make sure those teams are coming off a of bye week. Yeah. So they can play on that Thursday and then they still have like eight, nine days rest right after that. But I think there are going to be a lot of things that come up during the next contract talks. Like, for example, they, I could see players saying like they want to get turf fields banned. Like that's why Odell is blaming his last two ACL injuries mm-hmm. and more injuries since that happened this past weekend. So there's going to be a lot of, it's going to be interesting to see like what they can work out in, you know, in the in the talks. Yeah, what one hundred percent? Do you think they'll uh, try try to adopt a sort of protocol, kind of like GH, GHSA has? Fuck the GHSA. But um, they have certain protocols for kids that get concussions um, for, I I think, all their sports. I think they have to sit out a certain amount of time um, before they can come back in. Um, I don't know if the NFL has something like that, but I wonder if they'll look towards something like that to move on from here. Well, obviously they don't because he he literally went out with a concussion and came back in the same game last week. So (laughs) I don't think they have that mandatory minimum other than like maybe five minutes. Yeah, really? these these players want to play so bad they would. I think they could almost intimidate the trainers and say like, "I'm oh, going yeah. back out there." Like, I don't care what you say. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, at that point, if you're the NFL, what are you going to do? Are you going to say, "I let an injured player run out, run back out there and make me more money," or are you going to lie <laughs> about what the injury is, or if there even was an injury at all? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm interested. I'm interested to see if there's something with the turf thing because I think that's why we've seen such a high increase in ACL tears. Um, mm-hmm. I was I was just looking to see if um, Tennessee Stadium was turf or grass because obviously we know uh, Nick Chubb 
shredded his knee there. Yeah. Um, but the their grass as well. Um, and then, you know, the second highest um, injury rate in sports is so number one is football. Number two is women's soccer. And a lot of women's soccer fields are on turf or they play on turf a lot. Mm. So, and it's a lot of ACL and MCL injuries. Mm-hmm. So a lot of that cutting and, you know, turf doesn't give, like if you've been on like a good turf field to where it's like maintained the way it's supposed to be, especially if it's like indoors, you know, like uh, I remember walking on the Georgia dome and it was like your feet almost got like stuck in it. Like, yeah, that's the problem with turf. Yeah. It, it's like what they talk about at the combine. Everyone runs slower because of the turf they have there. And how the cleats get stuck in them and whatever. So that's an interesting point. I'm, I'll be curious to see if, I mean that that'd be a good thing for the NFLPA to go into. Um, just... Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's just like I, I think the main reason it hasn't been adopted yet is just how costly it is to have actual grass. Yeah, it's so yeah. much money. Like, yeah. Okay. But we'll see. We'll see. But it would be worth it in the long run, I think, just because of all these like elite players who have had their careers derailed by all these, you know, ACL injuries. I mean, just the other week, uh, I think it was who Sterling Shepard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sterling Shepard. Like, like and out for the season. So yeah. I don't know if that game was on artificial turf, but it's happened plenty of times now. And I think, honestly, the NFL, you're going to make more money in the long run if you switch to regular fields because you're going to have less players being out for the season, and that's going to drive up ticket sales. And honestly, they could do so many deals. You know, you could get like a Scott seat or something and get them to put their logo on the stadium. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But is, it, is there anything else y'all want to say about Tua Tagovailoa or the Dolphins or the NFLPA or the concussion protocol? Get well soon, Tua. I'll be rooting for you when you come back. Yeah, man. Just please sit out the next two or three games. We don't yeah, want to, exactly. we don't want to see anything like really bad happen, especially like on national TV where it, it, we see somebody's career literally end in a five week span. Like it's just not worth it. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll never forget that uh, Georgia game where they're playing against South and that kid got paralyzed on kickoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that was scary. Uh, Cause like the hit didn't look bad, but then like you kind of saw like the replay and then they quit showing the replay. It was scary, man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Tua, yeah, but please sit out, dude. I root for you, even though you went to Alabama and broke my heart. But um, thank you guys for tuning in to another Ajax Cast. If you haven't already, check us out on Spotify. Check out all of our social medias. And hey, I don't know if y'all saw the other night, but we are live streaming now. Uh, we're trying to get it on multiple platforms, but we'll be going live on YouTube. And we got some new things coming for y'all. So stay tuned, and thank y'all for tuning in. Peace.